All right, so it's time finally for me to be able to give you my hands-on impressions with Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. After a very, very long wait, almost eight years since we had gotten our hands on Batman Arkham Knight, I finally got to try out the next installment in the Arkham franchise, from Rocksteady. I do want to give a thank you to the kind folks at WB Games for flying me out to Los Angeles, for providing me travel and accommodation so that I can get my hands on early with Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. That will not alter how I feel about the game, however, contrary to what a lot of people online will say. Obviously, I'm very thankful for the opportunity and that kind of stuff is amazing. I also got to meet a ton of awesome creators in the space, some that I've known and some new ones that I've met for the first time. But regardless, I was going in with an open mind and I wanted to see how I I genuinely felt about this game. I have some positives. I have some negatives. I want to get into all that here in this video. Let me start off by saying that I unfortunately didn't get a hands-on with all four members of the squad during my time playing the game. I mainly played as Captain Boomerang and that is the only character I have recorded footage with, but I also did briefly get to sneak in some time trying out King Shark. I unfortunately did not get to capture any footage with that character, but I can still talk about it. And okay guys, don't hate me, all right? Or you know what? Hate me all you want. But the gameplay here is actually kind of fun. Matter of fact, specifically when it comes to gameplay, I think Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League is going to surprise a lot of people. I feel while there are so many diehard fans of the Arkham franchise, myself included, a lot of people seem to forget or didn't even know in the first place that Rock City's first ever game was an FPS. Coupled with the third person shooting mechanics that we actually have in Batman Arkham Knight with the Batmobile and also the entire Joker sequence towards the end of the game. And I don't personally think that it's as insane of a departure from what Rock City is normally comfortable with as a development studio as some people make it seem. Granted, I get it. That's not inherently the issue that some people have with Suicide Squad, and I'm with the majority of the people online that I do wish we could have gotten even just a Justice League game instead of Suicide Squad, but if this is the game that we got, then this is the game that I'm going to be judging, and when it comes to gameplay, I liked what I played. At least I liked a lot of what I played. I have some complaints. We'll get to that in a bit, though. The gunplay can be incredibly satisfying. There's the shield harvesting mechanic where you shoot an enemy in their legs to weaken them, and then you use your melee attack to take them out, harvesting their shield and gaining any health that you may have lost when you're in a fight. With Captain Boomerang, it's especially fun because you use his boomerang for his melee attack. Shocking, I know. He uses the boomerangs. And then there's also the counter shot mechanic, which Rock said he has already explained in a past Suicide Squad Insider. Anytime you see that familiar counter system that you may recognize from the Arkham games, you need to shoot a special shot at the enemy to stun them. When you have several Brainiac minions on screen and you're chaining shield harvest, counter shots, and your special moves jumping and zipping around with your traversal mechanics using your boomerangs or just your melee attacks in general as captain boomerang tossing grenades oh man it, it can be pretty damn fun boomer can even unlock a boomerang that when you use it on an enemy they slow down in midair allowing you plenty of time to unload your shotgun rounds into them for a quick kill his ultimate move is also super fun literally ping-ponging around with the speed force attacking tons of enemies on screen at once and some of the gameplay that you're actually going to be seeing on screen does indeed have the damage numbers but I found out that you can through the options menu turn off damage numbers you can even turn off the health bars if you'd like to if you don't want to see any of that information on screen health bars are fine for me I don't mind keeping that on it's good to have the information of how many shots I might need to take down this enemy but seeing the damage numbers is always too much for me I didn't really care for it so I'm glad that there's an option to turn that off and I know that's gonna make some people happy through your skill trees you can also unlock a traditional takedown mechanic where you hit two buttons to do a takedown when it's available and it has a bit of suicide squad flair to it and really when you get deep into the customization and upgrading your character's abilities stringing it all together can be quite addicting i in general get the feeling that this game took a lot of inspiration from something like borderlands i know a lot of people because it's a live service game like to think and compare this to destiny but i don't think it's anything like destiny the four player co-op the tone of the game everything just for me feels very borderlands more so than it does something like destiny and then when it came to my limited time playing as king shark i was just a brute meleeing as many enemies as i can to pop them up for easy kills then building up my super so i can launch myself into the air with his super jump and then charge up a massive ground pound 
clearing the area. I do wish, though, that he was just a full-on melee-based character, not relying on guns at all because, you know, he's like a freaking demigod and definitely doesn't need a shotgun. I think it also really would have complemented the RPG element of this game really well. You know, the fact that there is a character that doesn't have any guns, that is just a melee-focused character, and maybe could have had a sprinkle of free flow combat in there. I do appreciate though that I can get as close to that play style as possible, even though I have to use the guns at some point. And then while we're on the topic of gameplay, traversal is also just fantastic, at least for the two characters that I played. Captain Boomerang utilizes the speed force and his traversal requires a bit of finesse to really get it right. Essentially, the way you'll find it works best is when you toss your boomerang at a ground surface, then use your speed force run to get moving quick then when you have the air dashing a double jump running up walls you can get around metropolis effectively and with such style it really makes me hope that rock said it will make a flash game one day please plus if i remember correctly in the skill tree you can upgrade your speed force run so that it goes for 200 longer and that means that you can hit the ground running and be running across the city for quite a bit of time before you slow down so you toss your boomerang at a ground service start running you can jump into the air air dash hit the wall with the boomerang run up the wall and just chain everything together beautifully and it makes for some really fun and engaging traversal i like that there's a learning curve here with the traversal i appreciate that you have to dedicate some time to see how it works best and with the two characters that i got to play there was just this oh i get it now moment i imagine that the same applies to both deadshot and harley quinn even though i didn't get to play as them but okay we've talked about the things that i like but i do have some issues that i wanted to get into first and most importantly is that sometimes this this game can be quite a bit of a sensory overload. We played the mission that you might remember from the PlayStation State of Play last year where you have to take down this giant military weapon that's been infected by Brainiac. And during this mission, you need to collect these items, dunk them into the weak points, which inevitably opens up the weak points, allowing you to shoot them and work towards destroying the gun. All the meanwhile, they are throwing waves upon waves of enemies your way, causing there to be way too much happening on screen at once and causing me to lose track of what I even needed to do. I was just running around and killing a bunch of enemies until I was guided back on track and something to that effect happened a couple of times while we were playing. I just lose track of my objectives and although it can be fun when you have enemies you need to counter shot and enemies that you're trying to shield harvest and you're stringing all your really fun shooting mechanics and traversal mechanics together when there are just an insane amount of enemies on screen it's way too much for me to keep track of. I think that while technically speaking for the gameplay it's kind of impressive that there's that much stuff on my screen without much hitching or without any frame drops, we can tone it down just a bit. I wonder if this has something to do with maybe changing the difficulty, but I also wouldn't want to lower the difficulty and then have it just be too easy. And I definitely don't want to know what it looks like when you're playing on the hardest difficulty. The other major issue that I have, but it comes with a bit of a caveat, is the fact that the city is almost literally dead. I know this has been an issue in the past Arkham games, but at least for some of those games, it made sense. Or at the very least, they rode away with the city being evacuated. Here, from what I can tell, it sounds like the brainwashed Justice League alongside Brainiac's forces have pretty much wiped out everyone in Metropolis or just turned into one of the Brainiac minions. It's kind of bleak and I'm hoping for, well, a bit of hope in this game's story. From a gameplay standpoint, it makes what is otherwise a beautifully designed, almost perfectly realized Metropolis feel quite empty. And this is where that caveat comes in because I know why this is. And it's almost certainly to help with the game's performance. It's actually kind of insane that that in a massive open world game with four player co-op, I was zipping through the city relatively quickly alongside my group without a hitch. I personally didn't experience a single frame drop or quality dip, which is kind of crazy. I feel if there's one thing that we can all acknowledge is that this is definitely a game worthy of being exclusive to the current generation of consoles and is definitely taking advantage of their power. I just wish we could have found some sort of middle ground. Maybe less enemies on the screen around the open world could have it open up an opportunity for there to be more civilians just to instill a bit of hope and not make it seem like 
like all is lost. Who knows though? I haven't played the full game and there could be something that I'm missing. I'm also not a game developer, so I don't know how possible it would be to implement some of my ideas. I also will say as a general note that while it can be fun playing with up to four people, sometimes that's actually what contributed to the sensory overload thing that I was talking about. So I think I'll be playing a majority of the story mode solo while enjoying the co-op when I'm just free roaming around or maybe doing some side activities. Speaking of which, we also got to try out some of those side activities and explore some of the RPG elements of the game. One side mission involved us using these vehicles that Gizmo provides you with that are actually on a timer to explode. I think these were a little random and didn't really pull me in like the gameplay from the actual squad does. The RPG elements are, I mean, fine, but I don't know. I just wanted to jump in and shoot things. I feel like I need the full game to really judge this because that is an element to any game when it comes to an RPG that you really need to sink your teeth into. Like there's some vendors that you go to and side characters that you interact with that help you upgrade some of the things that you can do. We got this cool freeze ability on all our melee attacks, specifically for Captain Boomerang, it was cool because I would freeze a group of enemies and then you can just shoot them and watch them break like glass. So yeah, you can do some flashy stuff and it's kind of cool some of the upgrades that you can get, but I'm just not super into this. And I don't know, I am getting a little bored of seeing 10 different currencies and having them all do different things. The last major portion of our gameplay actually involved us trying out the flash boss fight, which is definitely effects heavy, but also kind of fun and engaging for me. Considering you're fighting the flash, they really made it feel like you needed to be quick on your toes. Landing your counter shots are critical and you pretty much have to be moving the entire time, creating for a fun, sometimes overly frantic pace to the fight. Again, that sensory overload thing, which has been a recurring theme and something that I've had a problem with throughout my entire time playing. I feel like if they toned it down just a bit, it would be in a really good spot gameplay wise. Story wise, I am very interested to see where this goes. Some of the writing here is top notch. There are some laugh out loud moments where my entire group was cracking up. Hello, swag. Yet again, your feeble upper body strength betrays you, Boomerang. Shark, hold up. It's a... Holly, get us out of this! Harley, Harley, do not touch us. But you saying I can't really makes me want to, you know? <laughs> no! Harley, no! no. Ah. Worth it. And there were a couple of other moments that genuinely gave me chills. <sighs> okay, Boomerang. You want to see what a real hero can do? I'll show you. How do I stop this? <laughs> Please, tell me how. You have to kill us, Diana. We have to die to save the world. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what Rocksteady has in store for us here with the story in Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. But man, I really hope that we don't kill the Justice League, actually. If we do, whatever ends up happening, I don't know. I hope that it's reversed either by the end of the game or through some post-launch content. I just want to see my heroes back in action. I want to see the first ever time Rocksteady's Justice League has been on screen, have them end up working together to take down Brainiac. And man, even though he's so mean, there are a couple of things in there from Kevin Conroy's Batman performance that are just, ah, oh, just so good. It really makes me sad that we lost Kevin Conroy and he'll forever be my Batman. Mog, I was born Bruce Wayne, citizen of Gotham. At too young an age, I lost my parents to the city's greatest enemy, crime. From that day forward, I swore I would dedicate my life to defeating those who would pray on the heart and the spirit of Gotham. So I became a symbol. Something even evil would fear. I became vengeance. I became the knight. I became that man. Of course, I'd have to rely on more than just my wits. I'd have to work hard. 
train every day to fight against crime. I'd have to design high-tech tools, equipment, and the most advanced vehicles you've ever seen. Before, I had allies, but I thought I had to push them away to protect them. Now, as part of the Justice League, I'm grateful for my companions. Because together, we are stronger than we are alone. Overall, there are things that I'm looking forward to with Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League, and there are some problems that I have with this game as well. We've got just a couple of weeks until it is out, until this long eight plus year wait for Rocksteady's next game is over. There is a ton of skepticism, I get it, but we're gonna have to wait and see how it all turns out on January 30th for the Deluxe Edition owners, and then February 2nd for everybody else. Once again, I need to give a big thank you to WB Games for providing me travel and accommodations for this trip to get early access with Suicide Squad kill the justice league and there you have it my hands-on thoughts with suicide squad kill the justice league i clearly didn't love every single aspect although i imagine some people online are still only going to hear that i liked some things and think that i loved it all what can you do unfortunately i'm not going to be able to change some people's minds in what they think about me or this game and that's totally fine what you'll never see me do though is attack any of the people who are working on this game i know they work tirelessly i know that they work incredibly hard and i applaud them for their work regardless of whether or not some of the things in suicide squad kill the just league just didn't land for me i'm not gonna go attacking developers for it i'm you know I, I, i'm normal but with that being said let me now kick it to you guys sound off with your thoughts in the comment section below based on all this new gameplay based on my thoughts here how do you feel about suicide squad kill the just league are you looking forward to getting your hands on the game come january 30th for the deluxe edition or february 2nd for everybody or are you still on the fence slash not looking forward to it entirely try to keep it civil let's try to have a normal conversation even if it's discourse in the comments section below and if you enjoyed my video if you want to see some more suicide squad videos here on the channel i will be covering it heavily when it releases later this month you can hit that thumbs up button and also make sure you subscribe and got those notifications on i've been caboose i'll see you guys later